Okay, so we're now going to talk about a little bit more sophisticated algorithm for parallelizing a dense matrix vector multiplication, which we'll see has much better scalability properties. In particular, we're going to switch from a one-dimensional distribution of the matrix A into a two-dimensional distribution and see that that leads to much lower bandwidth costs. And we'll also see that um, overall we can use many more processes than we could before effectively. Okay, so we're going to continue with an example of using 16 processes. And now, rather than dividing up the matrix A into 16 different sets of columns, what we're going to do is divide it up into 16 different submatrices, each of roughly the same size. So if we think of taking 16 processes and putting them into a, a 4 by 4 grid, then we could think of um, assigning to each one of these processes one of these submatrices of A. So in particular, we're going to focus on what, say, you know, the process in the top left of this grid would need to compute. So if this matrix vector product was to be formed, then we would know that the, the result in, with this partition would look like in the, the first quarter of this vector, uh, say y equals a times x, we need to multiply this top left quadrant of, um, or this top left portion of a times the first portion of x, and then each of these pieces um, times the corresponding pieces of x. So if our process is the, the one in the top left, then it only owns this portion of the matrix A. So if it also had access to this portion of the matrix X, then it could locally form A00 times X0. And so then if it wanted to have a copy of the, the result of this portion of the, uh, the first quarter of the full result, it would need to sum the contributions that were locally computed from each of these four processes. So the, the process in this portion of the grid might compute x or, uh, a01 times x1, and then another process would have computed a02 times x2. And if these four processes sum their local contributions, we would have the result of this row panel of a times the entire vector x. Um, all right, so that would put the, the result in the same distribution as uh, we see here. So what's important to note is that the initial computation is still only 2n squared over p if we have p processes, but the amount of communication that happens in order to, to do this is much less. And the reason is that each process only computes a subset of the, the final result, and it also only needs a subset of the input. And so those two combinations are what lead to the better scalability, and that's why we need a two-dimensional data distribution. Okay, so the the communication pattern that needs to happen for, say, these four processes to sum their contributions in order to get the result would be a uh, reduce scatter operation if we spread the result of this first quarter of uh, x between the four processes. So in particular, the length of this uh, portion of the result will be of size n over square root of p in the general case. And so if we perform a reduced scatter on a, a vector of length n over root p, um, over root p processes, then we know that the cost is going to be what's in parentheses here. In particular, it's going to be alpha times log 2 root p plus beta times the length of the subvector, which in this case is n over root p. Okay, so what's important to note is that there's a root p here. So n is divided by root p. So as we increase the number of processes, the total amount of data that gets sent over the network continues to decrease. Okay, so you may be asking, well, why is there a two here? And the reason has to do with the fact that, in general, it's nice to have the input of this parallel algorithm be the same as the output. So suppose that we had a, a one-dimensional distribution of x. So if we have 16 processes, we would want to have x divided into 16 pieces rather than just four. So if that was the case, then um, say process 0 would own this first quarter piece, and then process 1 might own this, and then 2 and 3. We would need to perform some initial communication in order to get into this uh, coarser distribution of root p processes. So it turns out that you can do that with an all gather within um, columns of this two-dimensional grid. But really the point is that you're running an all gather where the final result will be of length n over root p, and you're performing it with 
root p processes. And so it turns out that the cost of that is the exact same as the reduced scatter step. And so when you look at the final cost of this parallel algorithm, you see that we could reasonably make use of um, n squared processes. So suppose we set p equal to n squared here. What would happen is that this initial computation phase of say a0 0 times x sub 0 would require order of one work. Now if we again think of what would happen if p was equal to n squared, we see that this uh, bandwidth term looks like n over root n squared. So the, the bandwidth term is then order of one also. So the only thing that would be not order of one would actually be the latency term. So if p was equal to n squared, this would look like 2 times alpha times log 2 of n, which is only logarithmic in the size of the problem. So if you recall, the uh, original one-dimensional distribution had a runtime that was at best order of n. So we see that by switching to a two-dimensional distribution, we can get the runtime down to order of log 2 of n, which is significantly better.